What's up, YouTube? Kentucky Gun Doctor here. If you follow me on Twitter, chances are you see my post about the Voltec shotgun. That's not this video. I'm going to do some whole other awesome thing with that. More about that to come. Today's video is about Wasteland Reloading. If you're like me, you may have wanted to Wasteland fighting Super Mutants, Deathclaw, and the dreaded El Cazador. And throughout your travels, you may have stumbled upon a Bottle Cap Mine. Now, the Bottle Cap Mine is a weapon that does pretty high damage in the game. So I thought to myself, what's a way I can weaponize my Wasteland money without losing my digits or limbs? I give you the Bottle Cap Shotgun Shell. Okay, you've been in an epic battle for your life. You're out of ammunition. What's a good Wastelander to do? Well, you can either go kill some raiders, take theirs, or you can reload your own shells because you're a wasteland survivalist. Okay, say you find some primers. You knock the old primers out of your shells. Now you need powder. Now throughout the wasteland, there's going to be all kinds of powder. You know, and other cartridges, maybe a different caliber than what you got. Whatever your source is, get you some powder. Now, this is rifle powder. Obviously, you don't want to use this in a shotgun. Plus, this stuff is super old. It's like 40, 45 years old, something like that. It came from an old man, an old gunsmith, and it hasn't been open the entire time I've owned it, and he hasn't used it in a really long time. So I'd say, you know, this, this stuff probably hasn't been open in 30 years or so. Well, I got some poured out here, and we're going to see if this old gunpowder will even burn. Now, in the wasteland, you got to remember, the gunpowder is going to be over 200 years old. Now, we'll see if this burns, being as old as it is. Good even burn. I'm really surprised. Okay, so, you got your powder. You got your primer. Now, you need a wadding. And this can be wadding old used waddings you find on the battlefield you know because they fly off separate than your shot after so many feet and you can find them scattered about or you can use some old paper toilet paper to shove it down there anything to separate the powder from uh from the shot now a little quick tip for the wasteland survivalist if you're going to be reloading and you don't have the proper equipment Bottle caps are a good measuring unit. Now, the proper amount of powder, now this is actual shotgun powder. As you can see, the grains are flat. Pretty common in low brass shotgun shells. You see this ridge line right here? Where the first, where the crimping takes place? It just so happens that if you fill up your bottle cap just about right there, you got just about the right charge for a shot. Now, you need your ammo. Now, for the ammo, we're taking bottle caps, but there's a process to this. Now, we're gonna shoot a couple different kinds. We're gonna shoot them like this, just open shot. We're gonna shoot them in the smaller shot. And we're also gonna do a slug, and we're gonna see how this works. All right, now the prep bottle cap, you want to get it from here to here to here. And this is that process. You find you an edge, something you can catch the edge of the bottle cap on. Now, use gloves if you're going to try this at home. I don't recommend trying this at home. I am a semi-professional. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, you're going to start at the edge and get it flattened out like that. Pretty simple. And just go around. My hands are fairly callous, so it's kind of tough to break through. Once you got the edges out, you can start on the middle. Ta-da! Alright, you got your flattened bottle cap. Now the next step is to roll it. 
You just want to roll it up. Start your corner. Flatten it out. This way I, I can get as many in there as I can. I don't want a lot of space in between. You can also uh, remove this little piece of plastic right here. I've already waited too late, but I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. You have to do it like this because obviously you're not going to shove a bottle cap in a shotgun shell. It just doesn't seem to fit. Plus, you don't want that coming out your gun like that, you know, getting it clogged up. Mole rat pops up, says hello. You're not prepared. You don't want that. Pretty straightforward. Not overly complicated because you know you don't want to spend a time at the re a lot of time at the reloading bench because you know people want your stuff. It's the wasteland. They're gonna rob you. So you don't want your back turned. You want to always be looking around. Okay. Now from here, depending on how we're gonna do it, now we're gonna test these, see which way it works best. For this, you're simply just gonna cut it just about in half. And that half fits in there pretty good. Okay. Now, to make it the smaller shot, you simply cut that in half. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and process these out. So you guys hold on one second, and we'll be right back, and we'll continue it. Okay, I finally got all those flattened, twisted, and processed, at least for these three shells. Like I said, I'm going to do it three different ways. Uh, for the first one, is going to be basically buckshot, but they're going to be a lot longer, and we're going to cap these off as well, so the shot ain't falling out the front of my gun in case I put the muzzle downhill so go ahead and get those in there all right got it pretty full and like I said I'm gonna cap this off I'm gonna put probably a piece of aluminum foil or something over the end keep it falling out now you might notice the different depths of the cup sizes so for my small buckshot I'm using a the smaller cup off of uh, off the Winchester round here and just same thing with that fill your cup up all your pieces here now I have a theory I said I'm going to cap these off. As I was saying, I have a theory that these little guys aren't going to spread as much as these big guys. With these things coming out the barrel tumbling, they're a lot wider and they're going to encounter a lot more wind resistance. So they're probably going to sail off, you know, in different directions at a lot higher rate. So we'll just see. We'll be testing both of these, see which the spread is, what kind of damage it does. Now I want to make a few, a few of each of these, that way I have a good testing ground. Okay, now moving on to the slug. Now we'll go ahead and put that back in there. Now what I'm going to do with the slug is I'm going to put 
all my little bits and pieces in here but I'm not going to pack it in super tight because I'm going to be adding an extra ingredient oh almost messed up you know what hold on hold on see I planned this out and I still messed up okay to set the glue on this I'm not going to glue it inside the shotgun shell. Bear with me a second. I'll set this up. Okay. Now we're going to load the slug. I took the cup and slid it inside of a shotgun shell that I cut. I have an old, I have an old spent cartridge. Alright, now I loaded it up to where there's just a little bit of room to move around on the inside. And I also lubed up the inside of this and the outside of this in hopes that this don't stick these two together and I had to start all over again so we're gonna put some glue in here here's a second I don't even know if I need that to tell you the truth just to be safe I ain't gonna use it <laughs> the one that's sticking on the inside. I'm kind of forcing it in with my hands. <laughs> I doubt these two are going to come apart. I'd say this is just going to be one solid projectile. Maybe. If it'll hold up to the G-force. It may not hold up to the G's. It's going to be trucking. I honestly don't think I'm going to get any more glue in that. Uh, maybe I'll let it sit here for a little bit. If I can get it, oh yeah, it's starting to settle. There we go. Get it settled on down through there. This thing is super top heavy now. I don't have scales. I can't. I can't weigh the shot. Tell you what they're exactly weighing. All right, it's settled pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit more on top. I'm going to let this sit overnight. And while I do that, I'm going to load some more. At least, I want to have a couple shots of each of these. And we're going to try them on flat cardboard. See what they look like. And then we're going to shoot a few, few things. See what kind of damage they can do. So, we'll let this dry. And then, we'll see at your range. See at the range. Okay, now that we got the boring stuff over, let's put some meat in these potatoes. All right, we're gonna start with the long shot. And if you remember, that's the ones that I cut, I rolled up and cut in half. And that's this right here. So we're gonna start with that, and we're gonna see what kind of uh, pattern it throws. Long shot, we're about, I don't know, 15, 20 feet, somewhere around in there. A lot of powder left over so we didn't get a full burn that just tells us that man that's dirty that tells us that uh we didn't have a tight seal inside that shell that's okay still hit the target okay now we're going to go to the, the small shot if you remember it's the one that i cut in four quarters it should throw a decent pattern i think this is going to do okay once we're done here we'll go down and we'll look at the target and see and just look at the patterns and compare them maybe get a measurement how wide they are then we'll go to the slugs small shot now the glue slug
Wing. Well, that didn't penetrate. I got something that will. Double up buck. <laughs> As you can see, the double up buck really, really did a number on this, uh, this tank. All right, let's look at the targets now. This is the long shot. She's about as big as my hand. What I expected to see it fanned out quite a bit. A lot of them hit sideways. Right there's where the wadding went through. This is thin stuff, so I'm not surprised the wadding went through. All right, let's look at the other one. Look at that. It all stuck together. You got a few strays down here. But overall, it's stuck together at about the same range. And the slug, as you can see, didn't even penetrate. So I got, uh, let's see, I got five more uh, small shots left. So let's shoot some stuff. Now the wax slug. Wax slug, everybody's favorite wasteland treat, Blanco mac and cheese. Cranberry juice. Words can't describe how much I hate cranberry juice. Oh! Boo! Is that like powder fall out of there? Yeah. Alright, try it again. That did it. Last one. Do you want some real shells? As you can see, wasteland reloading is pretty fun. Now, some of the shells were failures, as to be expected. But overall, I think it did pretty good. Uh, the slugs didn't have a lot of penetrating power. You're not going to get it through any power armor or any cheap, shitty radio armor at that. But Nonetheless, they were really fun to shoot. Uh, oh, as I was saying earlier in the video about uh, the pump shotgun, the fallout pump shotgun, I want to do uh, a whole series, not just for that, but for popular games, movies, etc. I'm going to be shooting props and memorabilia and all kinds of fun stuff. It should be a blast, so be sure to check it out. And if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Real buckshot. I love my job. <laughs> you try to pull a fast one on me. A waterfowl magnum round. Give her a shot.